Hi, I'm Ursula Sadiq, Product Manager with Autodesk Plant Solutions. While the structural feature in AutoCAD Plant 3D is not intended to be a complete structural design application, you can use it to create a variety of common structural objects. You'll find the tools needed to create structural objects in a distinct ribbon tab labeled structure. One option for creating structural objects is to create a grid and then align all your members to the grid. The grid dialog box allows you to define rows, columns, and elevations for the 3D grid. You can also create beams and columns using existing AutoCAD lines or polylines or add them to a drawing by just picking points. The last step before creating beams or columns is to select which member size to use. Use member settings to specify this. In the member settings dialog, you can set the library, the profile, the size. You can also set the rotation angle and insertion point. We're going to start by drawing a W12 by 40 beam by selecting it from the shape size dialog and placing it on our drawing. Okay, we're going to start by adding our members by pressing the member button on the ribbon. As mentioned earlier, we can just click on the page to draw these structural items. Or we can start the command and pick parts of our grid. Or finally, we can start the command and go into line mode and pick one or more AutoCAD lines to define our structural member. As you can see, our structural members were represented by a widget on the line. If we want to change the representation, we can choose symbol model to get the outline, or to get a more 3D look to go to outline model, which is usually sufficient. Or for the most detailed look, we can go to shape model, which includes the curves on the inside sides of the beams. I'm going to go back to outline model, because again, this is usually sufficient for drawing in plant. OK, I'm going to take a minute to clean up my drawing and erase these beams that we just put in to show the different creation options and are not needed for my model. And I'm going to continue on with my structure, where I can use the AutoCAD copy command to put in the rest of the columns. Again, I'm just going to enter copy select my object, select my base point, and the insertion points of the other columns. Now that I have my columns in, I'm going to add some beams, again by pressing the member button on the ribbon. This beam will have the same size as already set in the member settings dialog, in this case W12 by 40. Notice when I put this first beam in, it is still center justified, which is not what I want. I want it to be top justified, so I go into structural edit and change the insertion or justification point. This will move the beam down so that it is now justified to be at the same level as the top of my columns. If I go into member settings and set this justification point, it'll persist across the rest of my modeling. And now I can place some more beams and then use copy to finish the structure. Now the bays on this grid are not evenly sized. So when I use copy, so some of the lengths of the beams will overlap. After I place these beams, I will use Grip Edit to adjust them to the proper length. To use Grip Edit, I will zoom in and select each beam, find the grip on the end, and use it to either lengthen or shorten my beam. I can use snaps to assist me in making sure I got the beams to the exact length that I need. Although in this demo, I'm pretty much eyeballing it. We need to clean up one more intersection using the cutback member command. It works kind of like the AutoCAD trim command. You select the limiting member, and then the member to be cut back. Here we select the column, and then cut back the beam. And again, we select the column, and cut back our other beam. Next, we're going to place a set of stairs. 
We'll start in the settings to define the type of stairs we'd like, namely the tread width and height. And then we use the stairs command to pick the bottom and top points of the center line of our stairs. Stairs do not automatically come in with railings, so we use the railing command to add them to both sides of our stairs. Again, picking the bottom and top point of each railing we want to add. As with other structural members, you can use the structural edit command to change any of the placed items. We could, for example, change the stair width from three feet to two feet if we wanted to. And pressing OK would update the size of the stairs in our model. I'm going to undo this command to get the stairs back to three feet in width. One last thing we'll place is a ladder. Again, by picking the ladder command from the ribbon and then picking the bottom and the top of the ladder. This will put in a ladder with roll cage, which again, we could edit if we wanted to using the edit structure command after it is inserted. This concludes our exploration of structure. We've discussed a variety of structural tasks, including multiple ways that you can place structural elements, how to use grips to change the length of members, and how to specify and edit member settings. Thank you for watching.